So this video is going to be more for my bushcrafters, my campers, my hikers, or anybody that's spending time in nature where there are venomous snakes. Now, let's face it, getting bit by a venomous snake is something that nobody wants to happen. And really, many humans are terrified of snakes. It is almost like this instilled fear that we have of them. And unfortunately, a lot of snakes pay this price because they are unnecessarily killed for no reason, just simply for this fear. Now, with this being said, there are times that these venomous snakes do enter our realm or our territory within our space that could possibly jeopardize us, our children, our pets. And of course, this is something you definitely don't want. And the approach usually is to remove or take care of the snake, no different than if it would be a grizzly bear visiting your property. Now, I do not, once again, advocate towards killing snakes. I am a snake lover, and luckily on my property, I have many black king snakes, so I have really never seen a copperhead on my property. But when we venture into the bush and we hike in the mountains, my children and I are very aware of the venomous snakes that are there. We have timber rattlers and we have copperheads. Now, when it comes to getting bit by venomous snakes, Snakes actually are third in line for killing the most human beings yearly, which the numbers are over 50,000. And a lot of these people that are getting bitten by snakes are not people messing with the snakes or trying to kill the snakes. A lot of times these are just unfortunate circumstances where somebody is not aware about where they're placing their feet or placing their hands. and. It's just kind of one of those things, wrong place, wrong time. It is nobody's fault, not the human or the snake. Sometimes they are just unfortunate. Now, when these kind of situations happen, this can be very scary, if, especially if you are camping or hiking in the bush. And this would be the most extreme situation and a um, possible fatality if you do not get help in time. So today I'm going to show you guys a very special plant that is well known that could possibly save your life in these circumstances. So the life-saving plant we're talking about today is plantain. Now I'm holding up a broadleaf plantain leaf, but narrow leaf is the same medicinal qualities. Plantain is extremely common. It's considered a weed and it really grows across the entire United States, which once again makes it very easy to find and a very good remedy for survival situations. Now, many botanists argue over where this plant came from. It is suspected that the seeds of this plant traveled to the Americas from Europe in the hooves of horses. However, many Native American tribes who refer to this as white man's foot um, because it would pop up every time a white man built a cabin, swear that this has been here since the beginning. And really their prolific wisdom and use of this plant kind of confirms it. So over the centuries, plantain has been used for many things. And one of its main qualities is that it's a strong um, expertant. So it's been used to relieve mucus and phlegm from the lungs and help people with chest disorders. Now I actually make a salve out of this. My children and I call it nature's neosporin because this plant is not only antibacterial, antibacterial, excuse me, it's antimicrobial. It's also anti-inflammatory. So it makes an excellent remedy for wounds on the skin. Now our salve that we make that we call nature's neosporin, I have used on everything from splinters, slivers, animal bites, bumps, bruises, and extreme cuts. Now, one of the best qualities of plantain is that it's a strong astringent. Astringents are able to dry, draw, and shrink tissue. Now, once again, I have used this on drawing out splinters and slivers out of my children and my skin just by putting a little bit of the salve on it. So this uh, component is really going to play an extreme part in the snake bite survival situation. So tips to avoid a snake bite. Of course, this is something everybody wants to avoid. Uh, for starters, learn your environment. 
learn your local snakes. What venomous snakes are in your area? What toxic effects do they have on the system? Where is their habitat? Where are they most likely found? This is going to give you a lot more information than people realize. Just once again, being aware of your environment. Two, watch where you walk. Watch where you place your hands. If you're walking through thick grass, let's hope you wear tall boots. Have the common sense that when you're in these areas, there's possibly snakes. So all of these awareness issues come into play. Now, let's just say you're doing everything that you can and an unfortunate snake bite happens anyway. You're going to find the plantain plant. You will take a handful of leaves like so and you're going to chew them up. You always want to keep the part of the body that was bitten by the snake below your heart. So let's say I have been bitten here. I'm gonna take my wad of spit and plantain and place it on my snake bite, like so. If you must, hopefully if you have, um, you know, a piece of clothing or something that you could wrap around it. This is going to start turning black. It will actually start drawing out this snake venom and turn black. When this wad turns black, you want to remove it, chew up another one, and do the same thing. You want to continue to do this, um, obviously until medical attention, you get help, or once again, until the black starts to go away. Try to remain calm. This is going to play a huge part in how fast your heart is pumping and pushing that venom through your body. Staying calm is really vital to the longer you have to survive. Keep the bite under wherever your heart is and keep replacing the plantain. This plantain is going to draw out the snake venom and it's also going to help control inflammation until you are able to seek medical attention. Now, what do you do if you're hiking in an area there is no plantain? Well, the answer is quite simple. Of course, the fresh plant is always going to be better because the oil um, in the plant is going to be stronger, the plant's alive. However, as I said in the beginning, I have made dried plantain into salves, which I have used on many things, including a dog bite, with a 100% success rate of healing. So you could dry the plant, possibly carry a tiny bag of it dried, or you could make an ointment and carry a small little salve of ointment with you. Um, it's not much to pack something like this in a backpack, and if it has the possibility to save your life, why not? So as with most herbal remedies, they have a higher success rate than people give them credit for. Many people would rather trust the medical system than plants that have been treating and helping human beings for thousands of years. This is an excellent, excellent method. Plantain is a wonderful plant. It is medicinal, it is edible. You can eat the young leaves, so it also can be a nutritional source while you are camping or in the bush. And this is a great, great plant. So to my hikers and campers, remember this plant. It is an extremely beneficial, powerful medicinal herb that absolutely has amazing qualities. It is not just some weed that farmers and homeowners hate. This is a wonder, wonderful medicine of Mother Earth. So remember this plant, especially if you're hiking, try to get yourself some from an area that you can dry and have on hand, or go ahead and make an ointment with it. I actually make salves of this, like I said, this is what I use to treat my children and myself when we have cuts, scrapes, bruises, splinters, and slivers. So until next time, guys, stay wild. Well.